So I have a question for you, Wink. Um, before 2017, have you uh -huh. ever heard of Malta? <laughs> no. <laughs> Honestly, same. I've never heard of Malta before we went to live there. So many people have been asking me, like, why Malta? I don't have an answer to that. But I guess you can tell them also, like, a lot of people are asking, what is Malta? Or where is Malta even? So maybe we should just yes. tell them about it. Bonjour, I'm Joyce. And I'm Wink. In 2017, we went on a crazy adventure in the middle of the Mediterranean, in a beautiful island country called Malta. And now, three years later, we are reuniting and taking a look at all of the memories we made during our four-month stay. We're inviting you to join us as we review the food, the sights, the friends, and everything else under the Maltese sun. This is Malta, the, the reunion vlog. <laughs> Okay, so Malta is an island country in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. So it's actually a group of islands, but the three main islands are Malta, Gozo, and Little Comino. And you guys, it is a country. It is not a part of Italy. It is nope. not a part of Spain. No Greece or France or any other country. It's its own country. It's Malta. Actually, I think that we should definitely talk about the history of Malta. It's like a big chunk of European history can already be seen in this super tiny island country, which is actually one of the top 10 smallest countries in the entire world. What? I didn't know that! I only knew it because I Google searched. <laughs> so this is what I found about the history. Actually, I never told you about this, Joyce, what? but there's a group of temples in Gozo, which we didn't get to go to, but it is actually older than the pyramids of Giza. <gasps> no! What? And it's older crazy. than that the is... Stonehenge. That's crazy! Right? Because it's like, I've never heard of Malta in school, and I feel like this part of Malta should be too. Definitely! So, I think it's called Gigantia insert photo <laughs> let me think all right so after that after this flourishing period these group of people just disappeared like they just <laughs> left malta for real like okay. they built they built the buildings and then they ghosted malta no one knows why Then the Romans came. Ah, oh, the Romans. Then the Arabs came. And the Arabs became such a big part of Malta that actually the Maltese language has parts of Arabic in it. And they set up Emdina. Oh, yay! Yeah, the yeah, was Yes, where Ga part of Game of Thrones was shot in Emdina. Finally, the founders, the ones that really built Malta up, which was the Knights of St. John. Napoleon even came to Malta and took over it for a while. But the Knights were chill because they were French. <laughs> Got it. Then Malta, this tiny country, just became like this huge source of military power. Like the Ottoman Turks, who were known to be just brutal in war, were scared of this tiny country. Nope. Malta was under Britain for quite some time, so finally they gained their freedom. As you can see, it's really like a melting pot of different cultures. Because it is close to for a sure. lot of different countries as well. It's sort of like in the middle of Europe and Africa. So it's yeah. close to both Sicily and Libya and, and Morocco. And so you see these cultures and these people really, you know, come to Malta to either live there or to visit, to study. But it's officially part of the European Union. It's pretty new. It joined the EU in 2004. So not so long ago. Before it became part of the European Union, it had its own currency and everything. The lira. The lira, that's true. So it only started using euros in 2008. And you're right that you know it was taken over by the british for a really long time it's one of the only two countries in europe that has the cars on the other side of the road so that was really confusing for a time 
And you did mention that it has its own language, which is Maltese, like the dog. But it is a mix of Arabic and Italian, a little bit of French, a little bit of everything, basically. But everybody there speaks English. Yes. So that was super easy. It was easy for, for us to sort of adjust. And it's easy for people to travel to it, too. And another reason why it's a big tourist destination is because it's warm. Like, it's sunny all year round. Was Never. it? <laughs> was it sunny? I say almost. Okay, they claim to be sunny all year round, but the moment we got there, it was like raining. But to be fair, mm-hmm. it, it was the first week we were there that was cold. And then the rest... The rest of it was, was really warm. And then they say that the winters are also warm, which is why a lot of Europeans, other Europeans actually come to Malta during the winter to have some sun. I would like really bump into people and they're just like, oh, we're here because it's the winter and it's warm here. And then here I am, the Southeast Asian... <laughs> this tropical islander <laughs> who is just freezing to death. It's still, I think, the best place, you know, weather-wise. It is just the best weather I've ever experienced in my life. Let's talk about where we can go to now. So we have three main islands, as Joyce mentioned. And Camino has beautiful swimming places. Blue Lagoon! It's yes. so blue! blue Lagoon. It's oh. so pretty. Insert oh. photos here. It's absolutely beautiful. I live in an island and I love the beach, mm-hmm. but I've never seen a sea like in Malta. It's yeah. so blue. Yeah, and the water is clear. Deep, it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Gozo, which again I mentioned it had the old temples. It used to have the Asia window. Uh huh. Insert photo here. Where Game of Thrones was shot, it's amazing. And in photos, it looks like, oh, it looks like a cave, you know. But in person, it's supposedly to be huge. And we didn't get to see it because <laughs> the entire thing, the entire thing, guys, just fell down, okay? The entire thing just fell yeah. down. Like a few months before we were going. And then Valletta. Valletta is the capital of Malta and it was named the European capital for culture. Culture, yeah. 2018. For that, 20, yeah. 2018. When we went there, it's just wow. Wait, everything is made of the same limestone. That's true. So if you go to Malta, yeah. if you see pictures of Malta, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's like very specific color palette. The buildings are this very tan, beigey color. Yeah, it's made of the same limestone, so almost all their buildings look the same. Except for the windows and the doors. I don't know about you, remember this? Like, I would ask you to take a picture of me with all the Every door. (laughs) Every Every door. door. They were so colorful until I realized that's a lot of doors to take pictures with, so I stopped in the middle of it. So because the, you know all the buildings, the walls kind of look the same color, the doors and the windows, they are different colors. They're very artistic. And so is a lot of different places in Malta. Very artistic. And this is also why it equals to a perfect movie set. So yes. if you've ever seen movies like Gladiator or Captain Phillips, it's shot in Malta. World War Z, Troy, plus other Brad Pitt movies. You know, Brad Pitt probably like lives there half the year and Assassin's Creed, Game of Thrones, and of course, Popeye. And they actually left left the movie set there and now it's a tourist attraction. This country is so much fun. So it's not just historical places. Mm -hmm. There's also tons of beaches. There's like the Golden Beach. There's rocky beaches, which we don't have a lot of in the Philippines. They have very active nightlife. They have shopping. My favorite place is probably the Fisherman's Village, you know. It's <gasps> oh yeah, Marsa Schloss. And you know, they also have different, like a lot of different events like Isle of Malta, so music festivals. Oh, there's also the Beer Go Light Festival. And there was a chocolate festival at one point. <gasps> and yes. It, yeah, a lot of fiestas. I think that's something that is similar between like the Philippines and Malta. They just love Definitely. to celebrate everything, right? So it's always a big party. And that is also one of the reasons why we went there. Yeah, so why did we go there, Joyce? Why indeed? Okay, so the story of why we went to Malta. Well, I guess we can start it off that we are musical theater people. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. (laughs) So you and I actually met in 
Blue Rep. It's a musical theater organization in our university. One of our friends posted in our group that somebody, this guy, was looking for performers for an internship. And this internship happens to be in Malta. We had to Google where Malta is. And so I guess we went for it. Do you remember like the process of how we went? Oh, yes. Actually, we started in something like this. We had a meeting <laughs> online. Yeah, so what happened was we sent in our applications and if that was interesting or good enough, we were scheduled like a meeting online with um, Patrick, who owns Curtain Racer in Malta. So from the many, many people who tried out for it, it was filtered down to a few people. But yeah, so what happened with that one was he scheduled an audition, a workshop audition, in sometime around March 2017. He came to the Philippines all the way from Malta just to see us, to audition us, and see which ones of us will get to go. It was like a two-day workshop, am I right? It was two days and there was like was a, like the last day was sort of like a, a showcase. So in the beginning, in the first day, we had a workshop. Uh, we actually had to sing our audition song. What was your audition song, Joy? My audition song, I remember this so clearly. My audition song was Good Morning Baltimore from Hairspray. Mine was Popular from Wicked. Ah, oh, that's true. Galinda and everything. Awesome. And then we had a workshop and Patrick was just amazing with the workshop. Like, you really, really wanted to work with him already, like, right uh -huh. then and there. Then we had to split into groups, and me and Joyce were in the same group. We were, it was in preparation to, to perform and to host a party for homeschoolers, am I right? Yeah, for kids, yeah. So we were in a group together, and it was actually a science-themed party. I played the professor. <laughs> and I played a fairy. In a science an party, okay. It yes, was... I played an elf. Patrick gave us our characters, and then we were given the challenge to think of activities, to pick a science experiment, and here is where it all went south. Oh my goodness. <sighs> we picked a science experiment that we were pretty confident about, okay? And we messed it up, guys. But luckily, um, Joyce came in to save it. She quickly changed. She quickly changed the direction, and then, well, we just kept going in that direction, and we gave it our all. Just like performed, I think we sang, played games, and yeah, we saved it. Uh, yeah, with the best we could. I really thought that at this point we were like, okay, goodbye Malta, goodbye Europe. But you know what? Um, the fact that we sort of like did it for the first we've never done this before and then we just did it and it worked so anyway yeah. the next day we got news that we were selected to go on an internship in malta yay honestly um, actually we were not the only ones yeah almost everybody kind of got in but it just so happened that wink and i were the only ones who were available or willing to go at that time yeah mm -hmm. and i'm glad i am glad it was you wink Oh, I'm so glad it was you, Joyce. <laughs> okay, moment over. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So come September, we went on a plane. Just checking. And it took us two days, you guys. Two days oh to get God. to Malta. 48 hours. I'm not An even actual kidding. 48, 48 hours. hours. We'll tell you all about that in our next video. <laughs> We're keeping that. We're keeping that in yep. there. Oh, let's do the like do these things when you have. Oh this. yeah. Insert pictures here, right here. And then me, me too. Okay. So okay.